Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, am going to tell you something that some of you have probably heard, but perhaps never thought enough about it, or perhaps have not been aware of what I'm going to say. There is a devil. A lot of people think that, well, that's kind of old-fashioned. Nobody believes in the devil anymore. Well, let me tell you something. I sensed him, I smelled him, I saw him, I wrestled with him. The only consolation we have is that we have victory ultimately in Jesus Christ. Never, ever take the devil for granted. He does his best work when we don't believe he exists or don't pay attention to what he's doing to our lives. He comes to destroy us. Destroy communities, families, nations, and the world. Why? Because we are made in God's image and likeness. And nothing we want in more than to see God's image and likeness present in the world. That's why he wants to destroy us physically and mentally and spiritually. Take it from me. I've been there. I've seen it. The gospel today talks about Jesus casting out demons. Jesus is an exorcist. He's an exorcist. That means he is one that casts out demons. I suppose most of us remember the movie The Exorcist about 50 years ago. And boy, it did a good job of, of scaring people, people having nightmares, people coming to church and wanting guidance and direction. I remember it very distinctly. I was only in the seminary at the time, but I remember having discussions with young people, especially relatives, about that movie. The movie was the most part real. A little bit of Hollywood in there, certainly, the, the head spinning around. But it was based on a true case. And I met the Jesuit priest that was in on the exorcism, who taught Peter Blatty, and mentioned in the course about the exorcism that did indeed take place. And from what I'm told, that the horrors involved in that exorcism, in that demonic possession, were even worse than the movie portrayed. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, some data regarding uh, exorcism. First one is this. Uh, there was a priest in Rome. His name was Father Gabriel Amroth. He died maybe about five years ago, but he was the exorcist for the Diocese of Rome. Father Anroth performed exorcisms. And guess what? I was there for one of them. I didn't realize at the time that uh, I was going to uh, participate in the exorcism. Had I known, I would not have gone, quite honestly. But I was in Rome, I was uh, in a course studying there, and uh, a priest said to me, uh, tomorrow morning we're going to uh, be present for an exorcism. Would you like to come? And uh, I hesitated, and I thought, maybe I should at least go see what it is like. Now let me just say this in parentheses. Every priest, every priest has the power to exercise, but only with the permission of the bishop. It used to be one of the minor orders of the church, the order of exorcists. So anyway, he said, we're leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning. I was at a villa outside of Rome, and he said, well, pick you up. Pick me up, and they brought me to a church which was on the outskirts of Rome. And in the back of the church, there was a room, and there was a, a door with a, a latch on the door. That way, uh, only somebody uh, who knew how to get in could get in, like a, a latch with a a key to the, to the room. And uh, he told me that Father Amroth was going to be doing the agency. Now that's you know, a rather famous person. And I said, my gosh, you know, this is a, a major event. It's something that I better pay close attention to. So I go in the room, and uh, there are about 20 people sitting around the room. And they're praying. Now an exorcism usually takes place after, the process of exorcism takes place after there is a psychological evaluation, psychiatric testing, 
It takes place after a lawyer's involvement that the person that is being exercised has not been kidnapped. That maybe the family thinks this person's behavior is just kind of bizarre. We have to make sure that what we are dealing with is indeed demonic possession and not just a person who's rather peculiar in their ways or perhaps suffering from mental illness. Father Amroth was standing near a table and a rather large man was on the table. And I hear Father Amroth going through the ritual of exorcism. There is a ritual for exorcism. The church provides the ritual. And although every priest can exercise, it is only with the bishop's permission because as I said, once again, we want to be sure that what we are doing is correct and that it is legitimate and that the priest himself is able to endure the attacks of the devil. The devil goes after the priest. Remember Father Damien in the movie. That's true. That's true. So anyway, the prayers are going on and he's invoking the litany of the saints. And all of a sudden, this man begins to gurgle and his eyes roll back and he's trying to get off the table. Father Amroff signals to me. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm not Jackie Gleason, you know? So the priest that was with said he wants you to do what? To hold one of the man's legs down. He became super strong. So there were one of us on one leg, one on the other, two guys holding him down on the shoulders, and the man is trying to get off the table, and he is mumbling and screaming to let him go. Finally, after about five or ten minutes, the man calmed down, and Father Ambrose finished the prayers. Now, it doesn't take place in one session. An exorcism might take many sessions in order to exorcise the demons. If you want to learn more about exorcism, Father Amroth has a number of books out. Go online and get a book from Father Gabriel Amroth. It's true. I've been there. I've seen it. Second one is this. Uh, it was a psychiatrist. His name was M. Scott Peck. M. Scott Peck. And uh, he died all the time, I suppose, about 10 years ago. But he uh, was an atheist. He did not believe in God. However, there came a point in his career where he saw some people who were just bad people. And he couldn't understand why. He called these people people of the lie. People of the lie. And he said, they're just bad people. It's kind of like a, a sociopath. And so he tried to learn how to deal with bad people. Now, sometimes the, the people are so uh, rooted in their evil that there uh, is very little hope of change, and they continue in their ways, unconcerned about what they do to other people. The sociopathic personality, or the personality that has just turned in on themselves. Let me give you an example of that. Um, remember the Godfather, Michael Corleone? <laughs> there was an example of somebody who had an option for evil, an option for himself. <laughs> He started out okay, as you'll recall, but as the story progressed, you saw him becoming more and more evil and isolated by himself in his evil. Evil isolates. Evil isolates. That way there's no hope of getting strength from friends, from church, from God. Isolation is into the self. He wrote that uh, second book, he realized hey, there's something more here. There's something about bad people. And I explained to you that the people are alive, but there are more people that he just couldn't get a hand on. And uh, he began to examine the demonic possession. Atheist psychiatrist. He began to believe that there is a demon. Satan, or Satan is the father of demons. Oh, remember that scripture passage that says, How many of you who are there are unbelieving? The root of all demonic possession, of all demonology, is Satan himself. And so he then began to investigate exorcism, began to investigate how demons take possession of someone, and he became a believer. He joined the Anglican Church and began 
part of his ministry with deliverance prayers. <coughs> now, you might want to get a little booklet on deliverance prayers, go online and find that. But basically, a deliverance prayer is the Our Father. Deliver us from evil. You see, Exodus is right there in the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. So if you suspect that there is evil in your presence, you suspect there is evil in your community, evil in your home, you suspect that something is just not right, say that out of God. That is a deliverance prayer. And certainly you can pray over someone who you believe that perhaps they are the subject of demonic possession. Last case is this. Just to show you how uh, serious the matter is and how legitimate the concerns are. Uh, a book called Demonic Foes. Demonic Foes came out in about five years ago by a psychiatrist. He is board certified. He teaches at the seminary in Dunwoody, New York. His name is Richard Gallagher. And he goes through how in the seminary he teaches the seminarians how to recognize demons. And then he gives examples in the book of those people that he has encountered who are possessed by a demon. Now, as I said to you, not everybody who does bad things is possessed by demons. Some people are just bad. And some of us, this is close to most of us, we find ourselves tempted by the devil. And no matter who we are, we can fall. Believe me, I know. No matter who we are, we can fall. But there's a consolation for us because in our face, there is always hope. And what's the hope? For us, the hope is that Jesus has conquered evil. He has conquered evil through the cross. We know that the victory has been won because Christ shed his blood to conquer evil, to conquer Satan, to save us from sin. In the meantime, we're involved in a cleanup operation. What's left of the dregs of sin in our souls, in our communities, and in our world. So what do we do? Number one, number one, you have to pray. And I want you to say that our Father, when you say that our Father, deliver us from evil and really mean it. Number two, invoke your guardian angel. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, there is a built-in protection for us against evil, keeping us away from sin and from creating chaos in the world and ruining our own lives. And it is the guardian angel that God has assigned to us. Number three, receive the sacraments frequently. As one lady told me, the reason why she goes to church, she said, you don't care about the sermon or the music. I said, thank you very much. She <laughs> said, I want the Eucharist. And I said, why? What does the Eucharist do for you? She said, it's my bullets against the devil. I love you. 